Mateys. How you doing, you scallywags? I have a pirate comic. That's why I'm talking like this. Hey, we are doing the weekly comic pull. I'm your real Manos, also known as Justin Cristelli for some reason. And we are going to be talking about uh, the comics I picked up. They are also, of course, brought to you by my own comic book company, Manos Publishing, where you can find Red Knight, issues one through four, for print and digital at pretty, pretty reasonable rates, I think. Well, I mean, I, of course, would think that. All right, let's get into the comics I picked. Uh, and I picked up two from Marvel, one from Image Top Cow, Amazing Spider-Man number 51, X of Swords, status 11, out of 22. And number three of A Man Among Ye. A Man, ye, a man Among Ye 3. All right, now let's uh, start talking about uh, The Amazing Spider-Man first. And this, I, I think, first off, let's start with the cover. The cover is absolutely gorgeous. My favorite cover of the week. It's beautiful. And I believe this is from Patrick Gleason, who did the interior art, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, cover, 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 blah, 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 I think. Uh, Patrick Gleason and Edgar uh, Delgado. Oh, Delgado. Okay. Um, and, of course, Patrick Gleason is the interior artist with uh, Nick Spencer as a uh, writer. So, okay, we're into this Last Remains thing. Part two, by the way. And, all right, last we saw our heroes... Uh, the spider friends got all possessed by Kindred himself, where he's using them as puppets to attack Spider-Man. Uh, Spidey, of course, is, like, trying to, like, you know, give kid gloves to his friends. He's able to escape and get to Doctor Strange, who is a bit more, uh, practiced with the whole demons and magic crap that, uh, Spidey is. So, uh, he's able to, you know, repel, uh, Silk being controlled by uh, Kindred, who basically goes, you know, I think it made my point. Um, matter of fact, it's hilarious. He actually thinks uh, Sin Eater's taking uh, control of them, and then in this scene, he's like telling him, like, no, man, I'm, I'm Kindred. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the main guy trying to kill you. So, you know, I think I made my point, so I'm just going to, you know, book. So, after he leaves, uh, Spider-Man asks Doctor Strange for his help, because this is really really beyond him, and he brings out the hand of uh, Vishati, which uh, Spidey's seen before, uh, what in, when was this, like uh, Amazing Spider-Man 42, oh, the JMS Amazing Spider-Man 42, I know we've had several Spider-Man 42 since then, so, um, okay, he's able to try and use it, and he's having trouble, and... I love this. He asks him, uh, hey, you haven't made any, like, bargains or deals or anything? And Spidey was like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, while they're having this conversation, he goes back to get the hand, and it's missing. And Black Cat took it. And according to what their conversation is, uh, this was all a ruse to uh, get the hand from Doctor Strange so they could use it without Doctor Strange. And I'm guessing... They want to use it without Doctor Strange knowing that he made a deal with the devil, but that's just me. Anyway, so he goes into uh, his own kind of, like, uh, dream state, or, uh, let's see, like dreamscape. Yeah, dreamscape. Uh, and it's really cool, and he runs into, like, Mary Jane, uh, and he is dragged down underneath. Uh, wakes up, and it looks like the uh, cemetery from... Uh, Craven's Last Hunt, and he just crawls and crawls until he reaches uh, Kindred, and he is set uh, beside a place at the table with a bunch of dead friends, including uh, Captain George Stacy and Gwen Stacy. Uh, I'm guessing Ned Leeds is in here too. Uh, I'm not sure who are the, uh, the other people, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be people that uh, Peter has let down. Uh, so, hey, this is pretty good. Uh, I'm going to give it four out of five Ram Chips. Uh, nice uh, progression of the story. Uh, Patrick Gleason's art is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I hope he's sticking around for a while. It seems like it. He, I think he's taken over as the main artist now in the book. So uh, I'm happy to have him. I think he's fantastic. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, enjoyed this quite a bit. Now let's jump jump over to X Men uh, X of Sword Status Part Eleven out of twenty two, and this is from Jonathan Hickman. And who's the artist on this one? This is uh, Pepe Larez. Oh yeah, Pepe Larez. And uh, let's see, uh, Mahmoud uh, Mahmoud uh, Asar. Excuse me if I mispronounce that. Those artists are really good. Uh, they do kind of the Stephen Yu thing with. Um, uh, actually, I shouldn't put that all on Stephen Yu. Um, Jonathan Hickman must write these scripts out because he is a big fan of setting the tone and setting the atmosphere with these nice long establishing shots where you get to see these fantastic worlds and these characters enter them. Which, I'll be honest, I'm always kind of blown away by you know shots like that where. Uh, you know, we get to see this weird, fantastic world of these characters walking around in it, and it, the camera is usually pulled back on it. Um, I really like that. So anyway, uh, a lot of stuff, kind of backstory, goings on with uh, the Four Horsemen, but I frankly got more interested with um, the scene where the X-Men themselves, the second half of the is issue, after the sword breakdown, <laughs> where we get to see the X-Men arrive at where uh, I believe these kind of Hunger Games are going to be uh, arriving. And uh, let's see, let's see, Saturnine shows up and greets them and says, hey, we have your uh, accommodations ready, you have your rooms, and waiting for them in each of their rooms are these tarot cards, uh, one each for, for them, and it seems to be each card represents them. They're on the card, uh, and it suggests maybe their destiny through this whole adventure. And uh, you know, there's there's strength, the fool, uh, the knight of Pentacles, death, uh, the lovers, and that's what actually has uh, Apocalypse so mad because uh, you know he, his card is the lovers, which I believe he thought she was gone or something like that, but that's not the case, as we see here. Uh, pretty good stuff. I'm also going to give this 4 out of 5 RAM chips, uh, and much like uh, the Spider-Man uh, 51, does a nice job of uh, progressing the story for it. The art is gorgeous. And, uh, yeah, I am not obviously buying every issue of this. Um, I'm doing what I've classically done, where when they have a big event, I just buy the book I buy and kind of just figure it out. And that's kind of what I've been doing with this. I wasn't able to, I haven't been able to get all uh, 22 books of X-Men titles. I would have had to have like dropped a couple things for a couple months. And I kind of don't want to do that. Um, maybe I should have, maybe that might have been the smartest thing, but uh, I don't want to drop out of the other books and just be all X-Men. So I'm not bad at kind of guessing and I, and I can do this thing where I can find reviews. Like there are plenty of people who talk in depth about these issues. So, um, yeah, four to five ram tips, not bad. So, now we jump on over to Image and uh, Top Cow's uh, A Man Among Ye. Uh, it's an Anne Bonny comic. And for those of you who are not familiar, Anne Bonny was a real life pirate and kind of a crazy woman. Uh, she's a really fascinating uh, historical figure. Uh, I definitely recommend checking it out. I can't really do her justice. But,. Uh, Actually, I think this comic's been doing her justice. It's written by Stephanie Phillips, arts by uh, Craig Kamak, and this is part three. Um, last issue, uh, they were betrayed by their own crew, uh, where Calico Jack uh, <laughs> was captured uh, by his own crew, sent to you know uh, the authorities, and Anne and Mary are on the run. They get on this ship, they're about to take it off, and uh, they're attacked by these other two women. Uh, let's see, one is Anne Castor and uh, Iris. And they put up a pretty good fight um, while Mary and, uh, let's see, Iris and Anne are fighting while Jane and Mary uh, kind of discuss what's going on. Like, Anne, oh, excuse me, um, Jane was on the run and herself, and they both, both parties needed this boat until they realized with uh, these more attackers coming for, for Jane, I was like, okay, let's uh, let's figure out who owns the boat uh, after we get away. Um, anyway, we kind of like see this really exciting scene where uh, Mary is pushed overboard. 
uh, by the storm and uh, and risks everything to go grab her in this really cool sequence. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the crew that uh, gave up Jack <laughs> was killed because they don't deal with pirates. Blam blam. That's really smart thinking, guys. Um, and of course, the end game for the, the uh, these guys is to lure and use Jack to help lure uh, and uh, be captured. So this is a lot of fun. The art is gorgeous. Uh, nice realistic. Uh, semi-realistic uh, type of art, nice atmosphere, uh, it's uh, nice and nice action that pops. Uh, we have this kind of cool little subtle bit where the seagull lands where everything's cool and nice and then when people start getting shot and killed, you know, it takes off fluttering. Uh, really, really nice stuff. If you're uh, looking for something a little bit different, a little bit more swashbuckling, it, it's definitely worth your time. It's a really fun pirate series. Uh, five out of five gram chips, really good stuff. Well, that's what I picked up this week. Not too much. It was a smaller week for me, which is fine. Uh, my credit card is thankful. But, hey, what did you pick up this week? You can let me know in the comments below. It always helps my algorithms, which, as we all know, are the bane of my existence. So leave a comment, uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that stuff. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr. Uh, I have a TikTok, TikTok at uh, Justin Rustelli. And uh, that, that's pretty much it. Oh, except for Patreon. Patreon. I have a Patreon where you can support the real Manos and Manos Publishing. Don't forget them for just a dollar a month. I think that's it for now. Uh, I'll be back uh, next week with some more new comics. And I have my first Avatar review coming up hopefully this week. I'm still putting it together. Well, I think that's it. So uh, push the button, Lindsay. <laughs>